Since before recorded history, man has dreamed of flying. In Greek mythology, Icarus and Daedalus built wings and flew to escape the labyrinth. In much the same way, man has always seen flying as a way to overcome surface obstacles and soar through the heavens. In the 15th century, Leonardo da Vinci became the first to study the mechanisms of bird flight and apply that knowledge to design of flying machines. Kites, skyrockets, and hot air balloons were the first human contrivances to fly. Frenchman Joseph and Etienne Montgolfier built the first hot air balloons. On November 21, 1783, they sent the first humans aloft over Paris. For the next century, balloons were the only practical means of flying. They contributed little to understanding heavier-than-air flight, but they kept the public eye focused on flying. The first heavier-than-air flying machine to fly carrying a human being was designed and built by Sir George Cayley. Cayley's breakthrough concept, which he engraved on a silver disc in 1799, was for an aircraft with a fixed rather than a flapping wing to produce lift and a separate mechanism to produce propulsion. Cayley's concepts formed the basis for all future heavier-than-air aircraft. In 1871, Sir Francis Wenham created the first wind tunnel. This wind tunnel, and others like it, allowed scientists to collect hard data about the ability of certain shapes to create aerodynamic forces. This data was far more useful than the idle speculation of the day. In 1891, German scientist Otto Lilienthal became the first human to fly in a heavier-than-air air aircraft in any kind of controlled fashion. He believed he needed to get into the air to gain a practical understanding of the requirements for flight. He made over 2,000 flights in gliders of his own design and published the results of his experiments. By the beginning of the 20th century, there were two design philosophies relative to building a heavier-than-air powered aircraft. The first, represented by American Samuel Langley, focused on obtaining sufficient thrust and lift to sustain powered flight. They were the first to attempt flight, but failed. The second philosophy, represented by American Octave Chanute, followed Lilienthal in understanding that thrust and lift were important, but stability and control were also essential to successful powered flight. Wilbur and Orville Wright, adherents of the second philosophy, used the engineering method to define a series of design problems which they had to solve, collect information from previous researchers, create solutions which they tested in flight and in their own wind tunnel to obtain further information and further define the design problem. They created a system of wing warping for roll control, used canards for pitch control, designed and built their own piston engine and propeller, and assembled everything together in a system of systems they called the Wright Flyer. Near Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, on December 17, 1903, the Wright brothers made the first powered flight of a heavier-than-air aircraft carrying an adult human. They set in motion an explosive growth of aviation technology that has no end in sight. The first century of powered flight has seen incredible advances in all of the disciplines within aeronautical engineering. Aerodynamics, propulsion, structures, and stability and control have all seen such incredible advances that the Wright brothers would hardly recognize the aircraft of the modern day. The engineering method has been the key to these successes and advances in all of the aspects of aviation technology.